done, done she spilled all the preacher's secrets because she, she would tell you, and I would tell you this too, that if a preacher or a teacher, we stand up here and we preach and teach what God delivered to us first. So okay, y'all be praying for me as we deliver this. going to go to a real super, super familiar piece of scripture, but going to look at it from a different perspective. But we're going to start it out. Y'all know how we started out last week. Get your cell phones out. Grab your cell phones. If you don't have it with you, that's all right. You want to borrow mine? No. I got a second one. You can borrow this one. <laughs> I'll even turn the light here. Here, there you go. All right. Yeah, you can leave the lights on if you want to. All right. It's got a little bit of a battery. I don't know if it'll stay on the whole time. All right. So if you have to hey, shine your light. Been preaching a little bit of a sermon series, going to ask God to be to open our hearts and to remind us to let our light shine for Him. So, if you would stand for the reading of God's Word, we're going to read that same piece of Scripture, um, Matthew chapter number five, verse sixteen. Sorry, <laughs> to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Heavenly Father, we ask you once again as we surrender ourselves to you. Heavenly Father, as we hold up, glory to God, this light, glory to God, that you've given us. We ask, glory to God, that you let us be motivated to shine for you yes. and to reflect your light in a new and great way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. All right. So, um, coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, I know he and Sister Stacy talked about this earlier this week. Um, and, and we got something coming for you, kind of inspired from Winter Jam. Uh, we're going to get more into it, but I want you, as you leave this place, I want you to go look it up and, and look at it, look up what's going on. And we're, I, I'd like to get involved in this movement that's going. It's called Who's Your One. <coughs> we saw it at Winter Jam, and if you went to Winter Jam with us, and we got we got some packets, some information that we brought home with it. And uh, in fact, I've, I've already ordered a kit. So they're sending us a church kit to get started. Uh, so we're, we're, I want to get involved in this. It's who you're one. What this is all about was every one of us, we're all called and left here to be. I, okay, I'm preaching to the church tonight, all right? So uh, here's a little preaching secret, you know. See, you come on Sunday morning because you, you, love, the, you love the church. You like the church. You go to church. Now, the, the old saying was that people that came on Sunday night like the preacher, but we don't have Sunday night. <laughs> but you go, people that come on church on Wednesday night or your midweek service are the people that love God. Right. So I'm speaking to God's people tonight. I, I have full, full, full authority that if you took time out of your busy week to come down here on Wednesday night, you love God. Mm -hmm. So the thing that what we're here on this earth as we're left here is to plant and make disciples. God, it's, if you go out to read the Bible, if you go out to the Bible, God compares. God says we are. He says. I am the vine and you are the branches. He's called us to be fruitful. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways we can be fruitful is by witnessing and reaching out to people. What this, what this Who's Your One is about is find someone that you're going to pick as your one. The you know, first thing I heard about Who's Your One, oh, I, my one's Jennifer. That's a silly question. She's been my one for a long time. <laughs> but if you had to pick one person, in fact, I want you to pick one person Talk to God about it. Ask God, who do you want me to pray for? Pick that one person. Go on, go on, go on to this website. If you got internet or even if you got it on your phone, go up to it and zip. And it, it actually, you put your person's name in there and their location. And it's got a big map. And it puts a dot on the map for that person. When you do that, not only are you putting their name out there for the whole community to pray. We're going to be we're praying for every dot. But every day you pray and you lift that person up to God. Mm -hmm. And not only do you lift that person up to God, you make sure you shine a little bit to that person. Mm -hmm. I'll be bringing stuff in print form for those that don't have internet and things like that. Awesome. I've like downloaded this. a bunch of material. I, I know, we've been, we, were, we were kind of chatting about it and I've been looking at it. I, I ordered one. Did you order one of the packets? Yeah, the, the kit for... Yeah, yeah I, got, I got one coming too. So we got, we got some stuff we're going to be putting in your hand about this, but I want you to start thinking about this tonight. But we're going to go a little bit to some, we're going to go to some scripture that's different. That was a little, you know, that was a little preview 
you with something that's coming after the next couple of weeks. But tonight, we're going to continue the Shine Your Light series. I don't know how long this is going to go. It's kind of who's your one kind of goes right into it, isn't it? But we're going to continue that. I want to look at the story of a man named Simon the Sorcerer from the book of Acts. We're going to read his story. We're going to read the, reading out of the New, New International Version because it was it, it's a good, it's an easy read. All right. Now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. And he boasted that he was someone great. That's verse, chapter, verse, that's verse number 10. I read 10. What, that don't make sense. <laughs> that's verse number 10. All the people, both high and low, gave, them, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This is a mighty call. This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he was amazed. He amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, and they were baptized, both men and women, Simon himself believed and was baptized. Make sure you remember that piece of scripture. Simon himself believed and was baptized. And he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles that he saw. Now, when the apostles were in Jerusalem that, and heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not come on any of them. They had simply, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands might receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered and said, May your money perish with you, because you thought that you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry, because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray for Pray to, the, pray to the Lord in hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. I'm going to stop there and talk a little bit about Simon. Now, if you've been in church for a little while, you've probably heard Simon the Sorcerer talked about. He is one of these, he is a free person in the Bible and in Scripture that preachers, especially of the Pentecostal nature, we like to pick on Simon. We like to ridicule him and say, hey, see, he was trying to buy his way in. But as I was studying and I was looking at this today, God kind of opened my eyes a little bit to maybe look at Simon from a little slightly di different perspective. See, Simon was a guy, an entertainer. They called him a sorcerer. He probably had lots of tricks and Maybe he was an illusion, and I kind of compared to start. I'm like, well, let's first think about it. We want to think about this man, Simon. Let's first kind of maybe think and understand who he was. Maybe a little bit about his background. Now, we don't know a lot about Simon. Um, if you look on the Internet, there's a lot of different <laughs> theories about Simon. Um, there's a lot of different things where he was talked about in a couple of different places, and, and there's a lot of hearsay about it. A whole lot of stories were told about this man, Simon. Now, obviously, Simon must have been somebody of significant importance. And why do I say that? Because of, out of all the thousands of people, men and women, even rulers, leaders in their community, great pillars of their, the community, good religious men that the apostles had interacted with, and at this point in the book of Acts, <coughs> thousands and thousands <coughs> had been saved and come to Christ. Thousands and thousands. That's thousand times thousand. It's a big number. The church was growing and spreading everywhere. They started off in Jerusalem when Peter received the Holy Ghost from the book of Acts chapter number 2 and he began to preach and he began to talk and he began to speak in tongues and the fire of God began to fall on each and every one of them and they were all saved and baptized and they received the Holy Ghost from the, from the anointing of the apostles. So the church was growing and spreading like wildfire. Everything was moving. The spirit was moving, and then there was this man's time. So think about that. Of all the thousands of people that were touched, thousands.
thousands and thousands, probably millions of people heard the gospel and made a change in their life. But the Lord thought to put Simon in writing him down. The writer of the book of Acts, which there was probably a couple of different writers in the book of Acts. Um, most of it was probably penned by Luke, which Luke traveled with Paul and wrote down the things that went with Paul. Paul wrote a lot of his own stuff, too. He wrote a lot of letters. But Luke, uh, it's very well widely accepted that most of the book of Acts is probably penned by Luke. So this man specifically was pointed out. So he must have either been somebody really important or maybe there's a really important lesson we can learn from Simon. So think about Simon and who he was. And so my mind kind of went to, I have to try to relate stuff to things that I understand. I don't know about y'all, but I, I try to try to put a grasp, try to put a grasp around anything. So and when I think of Simon, the picture that I got of Simon was like one of those magicians off of America who got talent. I don't know, but I get fascinated by the magicians with their card tricks. Right? They do some crazy, they do some crazy, amazing things. Some of the way they just move, maneuver stuff. You know? And now I'm thinking maybe Simon wasn't the. We think you see the one word sorcerer, and I think, well, you know, what sticks into my head is the big, it's the big, tall, mean guy with the black robe and the crazy big hat and the big gold rod that's got the snake's head on it. I don't know if we watched Aladdin this week. <laughs> But anyway, but, well, but Simon probably wasn't that, right? Simon was probably a magician, an illusionist. And in fact, they called him a sorcerer because he could do a trick, because he, could, he knew some things maybe that other people didn't understand. In fact, I guarantee you that if any of us were to show up in Jerusalem at that time with a cell phone and we flipped it like that and it turned the light on, they'd call you a sorcerer. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I don't want to ridicule Simon just because of the name that's attached to him. Because he was a person. A failed person. Where it says that, the word says that he was a man filled with bitterness in his heart. I, I don't know about y'all, but I've had a time in my life where I had a lot of bitterness in my heart. So maybe we can relate to Simon. But Simon being a magician, and I understand a little bit about magicians because I, I wish Raymond was still in here. He could do some crazy card tricks, too. He's had to learn a lot of those things. And the way he learned those tricks was why he went to a class or paid for paid for a kit, paid for something else, paid for something, paid for something to learn that. So <coughs> Simon was a magician, became a believer. Remember, I, we told, I, I, I told you to single that out. Read this story a thousand times. Preached on it a couple hundred. I, I don't know about a couple hundred, but I preached on it many times. But this time, when I was studying, God pointed that piece of scripture out. Can we put that back up there? The first one. I think it's the, it's on the first slide. Yeah. So, verse number thirteen. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere. Simon was a church goer at that point. He was reformed. He believed. He was a church goer. So I want to think that Simon probably had the best intentions. Simon was following this man, Philip. This anointed apostle of God and seeing the things that he's doing, seeing the lives that were changed, his life was probably already changed. He wasn't perfect yet. He still had bitterness. And he still had some wickedness in him. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't perfect yet either. So I can relate a little bit to Simon in that perspective. But he had a little bit of bitterness and wickedness still in him. But then he saw this, and they, as the apostles, as they laid hands on these people, on the people, and they were baptized, and they received the power of the Holy Ghost, he just saw something that no one else had ever seen before. Before this time, the Holy Ghost had never moved and baptized people. The Holy Ghost had operated through some people in the heroes of the faith in the Old Testament, only very select people, only very specific prophets. I mean, you can number them on, the, on two hands, the great prophets of God that spoke with him with the fire and authority of God. But now the Holy Ghost was being laid, they were laid hands and 
back pattern. Simon seen something. Whoa, my mind is blown. Imagine being put and being in Simon's place. So Simon's like, whoa, this is some good stuff. I don't know, I don't know where this is. This is some good stuff. I want it. So when Simon was used to how he would gain knowledge, because he was obviously a knowledgeable man, you can't be a magician and not study. You've got to study hard. You've got to practice a lot for that. I could tell you how many hours I spent watching Raymond trying to practice one little card trick. So Simon was a studied man. So he went back to what he knew. He's like, well, well if I'm going to, if I'm going to learn that, if I'm going to be involved on that, I want to be involved on that. I, my heart is there to be involved on it. So I, I'm going to, uh, all, all I know to do, all I've got is, here, here's some money. i got some money. I, can, can you teach me that? Now, Peter, I think, snapped at him a little bit. Peter got upset with him. Peter was a hothead. Studied the Bible. Peter, remember, you remember Peter? Y'all remember? You remember the story about Peter? In the garden, the soldiers came up to Jesus, and Jesus was getting ready to surrender. Peter said, nope, you ain't taking him, I'm cutting your ear off. He's quick to pull out the sword. Peter was, Peter was quick with that. He was a hot kid. So maybe Peter said some words that were a little bit quicker than he should have. Can I tell you, every preacher that I know has done that. Mm -hmm. I've had my feelings hurt and stepped on by a preacher, by one that I that was, you know, that had was in a position of authority. And they didn't mean to do it. I'm sure Peter didn't mean to hurt him. Probably did. Now I know that Simon also probably came with the right idea. Why did I say that he why can I say for certain that he did? What's the very first thing Simon does at the very end of the scripture? Whoa, please pray to the Lord to forgive me. That is not what I meant. Pray to the Lord, forgive me. I didn't intend for that. Please, that is not what I meant. Simon was doing the wrong thing. Maybe he had the right reason in his heart, but he was doing the wrong thing. Maybe because he had a misunderstanding of who he was. I'm going to give you a title of my sermon. The title is, You're Not a Light Bulb. You're a Mirror. Simon thought he was something that he wasn't. Because maybe Simon was a guy that was used to being in control used to be in a charge, used to have him being able to wrap his mind around things that he could understand, things that he could place, things that he could rehearse, things that he could practice, things that he could put in and he could do it to the best of But here he came across something different, had no idea what to do with it. All he knew was he thought for a second he was something that he wasn't. I want to read this to you because I want to make sure I get this right. I want to step back into my notes and read this to you. I found this story that related to this so well. Here it is, okay. It's a story of a light bulb. A light bulb. There was a light bulb that said, I have to find a way to shine. The light bulb went to a self-help meeting to learn about its inner capacity for light. It read books about how to get brighter. And each morning, the light, the light bulb would get up and receive positive affirmation. It would say, I am a light bulb. I believe in myself. I will shine. But nothing happened to it. Eventually, the light bulb became weary and discouraged. It began to doubt who it was and what it could do. It was almost burned out completely. But fortunately... One day, the light bulb was carefully placed into a picture. The light burst forth and filled the room. The light bulb finally understood the key was not to try harder, but to plug into the, into the source. The light bulb was doing everything it could to try to shine. But it couldn't shine until it was plugged in to something that made it gave it power. Simon was like a light bulb. Mm -hmm. He wanted his best to shine. He followed Philip around everywhere he could. He knew he was changed, but he needed that to shine. So he tried to find a way to do something. So he thought, oh, I am a light bulb. Let me, let 
me find a way to get plugged in. I, if I can get plugged in, I'm a light bulb. I can, I can just shine. Simon was trying to be something that he wasn't. You say, we read that scripture earlier, Matthew, so let your light so shine before men. We're all trying to get plugged in, right? We're all trying to get connected to the power so we can shine. God spoke to me this afternoon and told me, you're not a light bulb. See, a light bulb has fixtures, things that can happen, something that a little spark that goes across, a filament that heats up, or if it's a if it's an LED, it, it, it you know you put electricity and it ignites the gas, the gas begins to move, and the gas creates, and the light bulb begins to create its own light. We don't create our own light. See, if you were to go outside tonight, I was looking for it earlier. I couldn't find it, but Robert said it. He said it would come up in a little while. So I'm, I'm served by the time we leave tonight. If we go outside, we look over here in this direction, the moon will be out there. The moon provides a lot of light, right? Like I know a lot of y'all, y'all, a lot of y'all live like I do, out in the middle of the woods, you know, where it's out of nowhere. I like to walk on the road at night when it's cool. And sometimes when it's when the moon's out and it's real bright and it's a full moon and everything, and that moon just begins to shine so much light you can almost see down the road. You don't even need a flashlight. Because there's not a whole lot of light, a lot of their light pollution to mess, mess the moon up. But the moon appears to produce a lot, a lot of light, right? Mm -hmm. It looks like it shines super bright. Mm -hmm. But in the moon itself, in fact, if you go back, everyone with every ancient culture, they, they, they worship, they had a moon god because they thought the moon was powerful because it shines so bright, right? Mm -hmm. But now that we have a little bit more understanding, we know a little bit about the moon, we know that the moon itself is a dark place. There's no chemical reaction up in there in the moon. There's no fire burning up there. The moon by itself will not produce any light. But the moon, when it's in the right position, reflects the light of the sun. See, we're a lot like that moon. We're not a light bulb. We're a mirror. Yeah, before, y'all might have had an idea there was something behind this towel. But before I took the towel off, before I uncovered it, maybe you not not had an idea this was a mirror. Mirror is important. A lot of things can be shown through a mirror. But the mirror doesn't create any light. But we see all things, kind of things bouncing off of it, right? Because it reflects the light that's shining on it. Now, when this towel was hanging in front of the mirror, it wasn't any good, was it? It didn't reflect not one single bit of light because there was something in the way that prevented it from being exposed to the source of the light. Now, this mirror, as it is, it's kind of, it's got stuff all over it. It's got fingerprints <laughs> and a hair. Help my hair. This mirror's dirty. We sprayed something on it earlier. But all we've got to do for this mirror to be nice and shiny. See, now I look in this mirror right now and everything's kind of distorted. It's not reflecting clean because there's some things on it that are interrupting its light. That moon gets real bright on a clear night, doesn't it? Yeah. But you let a few clouds come in the way, all of a sudden that moon, don't, you don't see the light of that moon anymore. See, there's some things that are in the way of this mirror. But as we spray something on it to make it clean a little bit, and we begin to apply just a little bit of pressure, and maybe a little cloth, this mirror shines up nice and bright. Break the mirror. 
That's why up there's going to need a little extra work. I don't know about y'all, but there's some sometimes in my life there's some spots that need a little extra work. You see, you're not a light bulb. Simon thought all he had to do was plug in and get shot, get, get plugged into something so he could get made free, light and shine. Peter understood that I'm not going to produce any light of myself. See, because my righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. All of the goodness that's in me that I thank the good Lord for a lot of good teaching that was placed in front of me. I thank the good Lord for some understanding that he's given me and that he continues to give me understanding because I continue to find yes. that as old, the older I get, the more I begin to be able to wrap my head around some things and I see things from a different perspective. I always thought of Simon as the big, bad, ugly magician, the terrible guy, the sorcerer. That's an ugly word, isn't it? Sorcerer. It's amazing he was just a guy that had, had made a change, that thought he was something or he wasn't. Maybe all he needed to do was realize he was just a merit. And all he needed was to be cleaned up. God has commanded each and every one of us to shine our light. Mm -hmm. What light do we have? The light that we reflect. Yes. What do we need to do? Put ourselves in a position to where we can be exposed mm -hmm. to the sun. Mm -hmm. The moon shines when it's, an expo when it's exposed to the sun. It reflects the light, not of itself, but the light of the sun that shines on it. Our job on this world, as we walk out of here, for our families, for our one, is to shine. Maybe clean off some of them rough spots that we all have. we can do, we can't, we can't, we can't shine of ourselves. Simon wanted to be in control. He wanted to shine for himself. We can't shine for ourselves. All we can do is say, okay, God, here I am. Your mirror. I'm going to do my best to remove anything and Lord remove anything from in front of me that will prevent your life from reflecting on me. Let me be your mirror. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, tonight for the opportunity to shine for you. We ask, Heavenly Father, to let your light shine on each and every one of us and let us walk out of here bright for you. Heavenly Father, let your light be reflected in our lives so that those that are watching the lives that we live might see your goodness and give you the glory for it. Because all the glory, all the light is yours. Let us shine for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right.